What's up everyone? Welcome to part two of the Lego Infinity Mirror Project. As you can see, this is where we're at, but we'll jump into that a little later in the video. First, I want to give out a shout to Gord Rock. You can check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he does a lot of cool woodworking videos as well. Also want to give a shout out to Jay the Tinker, another YouTuber for we did a sticker swap and go check out his channel as well. And if you're interested in doing a sticker swap, I got mine here. Uh, I do have some larger ones on the way. Uh, just shoot me an email and we'll get that arranged. And if you want to support the channel, hit that subscribe button and also give the video a thumbs up. So let's jump in and see how we got to here. So, first off is going to be the design. So I did my design in Illustrator, but of course that was only after several doodles on paper just to kind of think out what I wanted to do. Now I'm going to be using two different types of material here. First one, three quarter inch uh, plywood, and that's going to be for our main base and structure here. Second is some hobby wood, three millimeter. That's where uh, some good calipers come in. Mine varied from anywhere from 2.45 millimeters to 2.95 millimeters. So the reason to know your thinness there is because in, that's going to be for these channels here that are going to hold the acrylic in the mirrors. And you want to, you're going to have to wrap, pocket those out or cut those out, whatever kind of cut you want to do to fit those in. You want to make sure you have some tolerance there. Uh, I do about 0.25 millimeters on each side. Uh, that gives you enough room for glue and everything um, and still have that stability. So those are pretty well held in there. But even before all that, you know, these just come, all these pieces come fresh off the CNC. So first thing, sand. Lots and lots of sanding. So much fun. There's so much sanding in this. Um, then I used a band clamp to glue the whole box together. Uh, I waited to glue these parts in because the first thing was, if you can see this channel, this middle where the LED goes, there is a center channel and then two sides. Okay, your LED strip's going to go down in there, and then this fits in there over it, so it's kind of uh, a guard for it. Originally. I was going to use this super thin LED, but as you can t see, these are very far spaced out. And I was also going to run them up the sides here. And that's what this piece was originally for, was here. And it was going to give it something to hold on to, and then also per uh, block the acrylic from sliding left to right. One of the issues I had was with that thin one and coming up the sides there, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of space in there. Uh, just about, just over a quarter inch. So, I found a different LED strip, this old one I had. Uh, the only problem with was it was thicker, so I had to get my Dremel, Dremel and go in and Dremel this down to give me just a little bit more room. I'm also going to have to sand down these so this sticks in there. So one of the things was when I was doing that, when I was making this and doing that, I put these in and I was playing around with how to get things in and out. So that's one of the things during the design process. You just want to go, you know, when you're building something, you just want to go and throw everything in and keep moving. Spend some time, play around, see what works. Okay, so... That's what I did here, and that's when I found out about this and just make, you know, this thickness and trying to get it in here. But we'll just go in, slide it, and then I can push it back in there. And I have enough room. Okay, like I said, it's an old LED strip. It doesn't have any more backing on there. Now we have the cover grate that we'll put in like that. And so now we have, we'll want to eventually, we're going to glue this down. Now I just got to think that out a little bit more of 
how I'm going to attach the LED, make sure it stays down nice and firm, and then attach this and have it all painted. But that'll be in the next video. Right now, we're just getting the basics of the box done. So one of the other reasons I switched to this other one was our control module for the LEDs. You have your LED connection side, and then you have your barrel plug. Then you can just get your cell phone, put it on the camera, scan the QR code, and it'll give you the app to control these LED lights. Always make sure to test out your LED lights before you glue any of them down. Make sure they're turned on and working properly. Let's get that barrel cable and plug it in. Make sure they do turn on and they do. Now if they don't turn on, you can try switching back and forth, uh, switching how this is plugged in, the uh, LED to the control. So we're going to unplug that real quick, tuck that down in there, and then loop our power out through the back like so. All right, put that, and we can plug it back in. And there we go. We're pretty much set now. See, if I had put this in, I would have been giving myself even less room, and now I have a natural blocker for that channel on the acrylic. Go ahead and slot that in, give me an idea there. And I'm still going to add some more. I got some uh, hobby wood sticks here, and I'm going to use these to block the channels for the front, like there. So the two-way mirror for this front one can't won't slide around. And I'll probably just use this for this side on the acrylic, and the same for that for the back uh, acrylic mirror. All right, so next, let's look at the lid. Now the lid, eventually, these will be glued in, but right now, they're not. So let's take a look at uh, the studs real quick. You can see it's actually a piece of three quarter and some of the hobby wood glued together. Now I did this for two reasons, one, um, I had to use a 0.8 millimeter bit to get this Lego detail cut out. So that's a very tiny bit. Using it on the uh, long mill, had to get in and out of those. So I had to use a small bit, and three bits gave their lives for this project. It's part of the process. But I got my long mill tuned in for using 0.8 millimeter bits. And then, of course, I just simply cut those out and then glued them together to give me this. And that gives me the right height. One other thing, I did get some tear out. So let's look at the lid here. Oh, a little tight, of course, right when I'm filming, huh? Let's see if we can see there. Got some tear out. Um, and I still got some more sanding to do. But what we'll do there is we'll get some putty sanded out. Lots and lots of sanding. And before, of course, we paint it all. Because I'm still going to want to come in here on the lid and sand this down even some more. I didn't give myself enough tolerance. Uh, I could go and cut it out and I could have gone smaller. But my fear of cutting this any smaller was if we look how close to the edge that already is. So I'm just going to keep taking it down a little bit and a little bit more so that just fall, it'll fall right in even when it's painted. So you may have also noticed there's a piece of, long piece of hobby wood right here. This is not glued in. This is just by tension and force. Um, still debating whether I'm going to keep that or not. Oh, you see, just slid on me. That's why we need that, that piece there. Again, that's all in the next round. Um, it's been a really fun project. I've had a great time making this. Um, been a little slow, but 
that's just part of creating things sometimes. Sometimes you just got to stop, give yourself some time to think and make sure all the pieces are working. With that said, I think off to a pretty good start. Next, we got the putty, the sanding, 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 sanding. One of the things I did find out, I had been using cheap sandpaper. I went ahead and bought some, the more expensive sandpaper, Lifesaver. It lasts way longer, way more effective. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, cheaper wins, sometimes quality costs more. So when it comes to sandpaper, I am going to say, go ahead, uh, jump on in and uh, get that more expensive sandpaper. It's worth it. It lasts so much longer, so much longer. It's not even funny. And just to kind of go over the sanding schedule on this, um, did I believe 180, 220, 320. And that's where I'm going to get it all to before I paint it. So, and then of course I'll need to get these glued in as well. But of course I got a putty first. Thank you all, all for watching and tuning in. If you aren't subscribed, remember, hit that subscribe button. You help support the channel that way. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And make sure you're on the lookout for part three when this is finished. So until next time, keep making stuff.